Hello everybody, my name is Sandra Staub. As you've read in the title of this video, today we're going to design a custom tote bag. I am a freelance illustrator and designer based in Zurich and if you've seen any of my past videos, right now I'm working on creating a bespoke merch series. I designed a sticker sheet which will be given away for free with every order and a candle label that features the logo of the entire series. And this video is all about totes, the sustainable alternative to plastic bags, a super important aspect of any of the products that I am making. So here I have a very simple mock-up. I just have the pixel graphic on a separate layer on low opacity. That's because I want to vectorize it so all lines look crisp and clear when printed. From the printer company I know that my printable area is 28 by 28 centimeters. A super easy way to mark this is by creating a square that is the exact same size and using it as a guideline. As a reference, my entire artboard is 100 by 60 centimeters. The way I will trace my sketch is with the pencil tool because I just love to draw shapes really naturally and carefree. To start off, I'm actually going to pick the color from the original drawing with the eyedropper tool. I want to use it as a fill with stroke turned off. Now I'm making my sketch transparent again, so I know where to trace. And then I go straight in. I like to draw piece by piece. I find it way more forgiving. I also lower the opacity of the vector layer so I can check that my paths indeed follow the image underneath. Then let's select our shape with the node tool. Ooh, <laughs> I got a lot of nodes here. Usually I'm not a big fan of all these nodes so I'm just going to select the ones that are close to each other and just delete them. Notice how the shape changes and it becomes more and more simplified. And I also drag some of the node handles where the path does not look right. I don't worry about this area here because this is where two shapes will be combined. So there's no point in spending time to refine it. You'll know what I mean in a bit. All right, looks pretty good. So I'm going to do the same for the rest. Because we had so many notes last time, I think that I will play a little bit more with the smoothing level of the pencil tool. The higher this goes, the fewer notes my shape will have and thus the smoother it will look. For a simple shape like this, it works wonders. Be mindful though that for more intricate shapes with a lot of angles, I would keep the smoothing low. But see how the shape is much smoother and I don't have too many notes that I have to adjust. Make sure your shapes overlap when you draw them because at the end we'll group them into one object. And now we have one leg done. Let's move on to a shape that I think will work better with the pen tool. I usually use the pen tool when the shape is easy and will really benefit from a very limited number of nodes. So here I just tap and drag until the path curves ever so slightly. Because I'm dealing here with a corner, I can either end my path and start again from the same node. Or I can just continue my shape and come back to this corner, tap on one of the handles. Now I have a disconnected node, which creates the exact shape that I need. For the rest, I'm using the pencil tool in the way I showed you before. And again, just like I previously did, I select all my shapes and group them from the Arrange tab. Moving on, I have already hidden the body shapes so I can better focus on what's next, her hair. I've already created a new layer for this and I'm going to use the pencil tool with a white fill and start tracing it. Okay, now that the easy part is done, I will draw the hair strands with the pen tool since I'd like to achieve a very smooth wavy curve. For this, I pick up the pen tool turn stroke on, give it a white color, turn fill off and then I adjust the stroke width to about some, let's see, two points. Then I just tap and drag, tap and drag and I finesse with the node tool.
Okay, now the bangs. If I make the body shape visible, you notice it's placed on top of the hair. So then I need to draw the bangs on top of the body silhouette. Let me make a new layer for that. And then I draw the bangs with the pencil tool, as well as the hair that goes around the ear and to the back of her neck. Done. Time for some cool details, like her tattoos. Most of them are pretty straightforward, so of course I'm going to create them with the pen tool. Keeping stroke weight the same at two points in dark blue. And you can see just how easy they are to make. If you feel like you need a pen tool 101 tutorial, there's a video in the description that teaches you all the basics. The face details I do in a very similar way, but I want to show you a third way to create a sharp corner like in the eye shape. As you're dragging the handles in that node, hold down one finger. Now you can bring back one handle and then continue your shape as you normally would. Finally, let's focus on these decorative details on the side. The circles I simply create with the shape tool. As for the botanical element, I'm creating the stem with the pen tool and the rest with a pencil. All right, here we go. We have all the shapes and all the little details. So let's remove the guide as we do not need it at this point. I can just send this file to the printer indicating that this is the printable area. But of course you'll also want to send the file without the mockup, simply the vector graphic itself. So if I remove my background, you can see that the area around my design is transparent. So only my character with the simple decorative elements will end up being printed on the back. Okay, now let's see the final result. Drum roll. Here's the final product. As you can see, it is pretty much what I had envisioned. So if you follow this tutorial exactly and are very careful in communicating with your printer, you'll get the same results. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial with me, showing you how you can bring your design from a mock-up onto an actual printed product. This bag is part of my merch series and can be purchased on my website, which will be linked down below. If you like my work, follow me on Instagram at sandra.staub. Like this video and tune in for our next episode. Bye-bye!